Well, hello. Hey, Marianne. How you doing? Okay. All right, I'm going to wait just a minute here while people are coming in. Good. Glad you're doing well. Okay. All right. So, today we're going to be doing um, a chainmail bracelet. Um, it, it's actually a very simple weave. It's um, kind of a combination of different, uh, different weaves. It's this bracelet I have on here. It's a double two and two uh, with some rosettes. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna take that off. Hi, Monica. So let's see if you can see it better here. These are two sets of just a simple two jump rings into two jump rings. And then they're connected with a little rosette flower, if you will, uh, on there. And then I just put a um, clasp hook on here with the soldered jump ring on the other end. So that's how it goes. So it's not anything complicated as far as, you know, um, the different weaves of chain mail. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, I used, on this one, I used 18 gauge, um, four millimeter jump rings on here. And for the rosettes, on this particular one, um, I had some eight millimeters, but I really think they're a little bit too big. But they're eight millimeters and 18 gauge. And uh, for the demo, I'm, I switched it out, and I'm going to be using 16 gauge, 7 millimeters for just the rosette part. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's, there's leeway. You can, you can use what you have, basically. Uh, but I like the way the rosettes form a little bit better with the 16 gauge uh, as opposed to the 18 gauge. Hey, Patty. I hope you're feeling better today. Okay. She's been out of the uh, under the weather a little bit, so she's feeling better, I think. All right. So, um so that's what I used. 18 gauge for the 4 millimeter rings and let's just say 16 gauge 7 millimeters for the rosettes. Okay. So, now I have, I, I've told you guys before, um, for those of you who watch me regularly, um, I have like a little cup of jump rings that are ready to go. They're, um, they're cut and they're uh, patinaed and they're just available. I like that better than having a bunch of um, rings that aren't patinaed. I, I don't know. I just, this is how I, how I do things. Uh, so normally your rings would be the copper finish like this. And then when you're all done, you would dip it in the liver of sulfur if you wanted, which I think most of us would uh, want that patina on there. But um, they start out like this and then I, I link them all I, like a like a chain and then I dunk them in the liver of sulfur then I clean them with steel wool and then tumble them and then I have them available whenever I need them okay so um, the first part is really boring but it's necessary uh, you would put out your jump rings on your on a bead mat or something uh, like that let me see if I can get you closer a little bit. And the boring task of opening jump rings. And you'll be happy once you get past this task because um, it, it just helps you move along faster if you have your jump rings 
already pre-opened and I'm just giving them a twist to open them. I don't want to open them too far to distort them. Sometimes when you open them too wide, then it's hard to get them back into the round shape again. So you'll just open a buttload of these. And, you know, I think I, think I used about 160 of the 8 millimeter. I mean, of, I'm sorry, of the 4 millimeter uh, 18 gauge. And then the larger rings... These are the seven millimeters here. Um, for this bracelet, I think I used about 21. That's depending on your wrist size. Yeah, Monica, it, it's just, you know, there are times when I just can't think of things to work on, any projects. So I just make up a bunch of stuff like this. Um, it keeps me busy and I have them then when I need them. I don't have to worry about that step. So um, I do that with my head pins, the copper head pins too. And um, the larger links that I make um, out of oval chain, the, a pre-bought chain, uh, the links come apart and, and I do that as well. So that way that stuff is always accessible easily. So you'll need two pairs of flat nose pliers. Uh, that's the best. If you, if you have one pair of flat nose pliers and a pa pair of chain nose pliers, you can get by with that. Uh, but if you can swing having two pairs of flat nose, uh, it's, it's a lot easier. The, the point uh, on the chain mail, sometimes you slide off of that um, because the the metal is a little more narrow and it's easier to slide off the tip of that. So the flat nose comes in handy for the chain mail. And if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free. This is not a, a very involved demo. And I've put together a lot of this stuff already because it would be um, kind of boring to watch me put a whole bracelet together like this. Because it's just repetition once you get going. Sometimes there's some rings that are closed really well and I hate to open those. Because I'll never get them closed quite like that again. All right, so I already had pre-opened a bunch of these to kind of streamline this a little bit. Uh, Marianne, the tool to make jump rings, it is a attachment uh, that I put on my flex shaft, on my Fordham flex shaft. Um, I can show you that. I'll have to get up and get it. But that might be handy or helpful for those who don't know. Hang on just one second. Okay. I'm not going to make any, but I'll show you the, the stuff. Show you the goods here. 